maybe I need 475 in a fixed plate, 800 grains. And then they shoot fat with 800 grains, and of course it's gonna zip right through it. Then the preaching starts. Welcome back to the Elk Shape YouTube channel. This was a candid conversation between Aaron Snyder of Kafaru and Dan. They got to sit down and share just some of their archery hunting experience. Aaron gets to hunt as much as anybody as Dan and I know. A ton of days in the field, guiding as well as hunting for himself. He's always out in the field, hunting, testing, tinkering. He's a perfect example of ABT and hard work. And we just wanted to share this conversation with all of you. All of the links are listed down in the description. If you want to follow Aaron, check out a Kafaru pack. We appreciate y'all. Let's roll the conversation and feel free to share your hunting experiences down below in the comments. Let's go. I get up, I walk the dogs two or three miles. Uh, we usually snowshoe. That there's The park borders my house. We'll snowshoe like a couple miles in and I go to big steep hills and throw cliffs to wear these big bastards out. And then I'll come back and lift. And then I hop on the mountain bike or Amy drops me off at the bottom of the mountain. When I get back, I set aside an hour to answer questions on social because that whole time I'm not really messing with my phone. And so I'll sit, usually from like four to five, I answer emails and questions on social. And then, uh, you know, we'll eat. And then uh, I've been working on a book. So from seven to eight, I've nice. actually, uh, I record it. Um, yep. And then Amy, she's the ghostwriter or whatever, she types it. So I've written, it's two I'm working on. One's just backpack hunting, and then one's like the traditional archery, kind of the start to finish or whatever from when I started. So when you sit down at four to 5 p.m. and you're like, grab your phone, and you open up Instagram, in the upper right hand corner, how many messages on average, because you have over 100,000 followers, you've been in the hunting industry for a while, you have a cult following with Kifaru, you also kill stuff consistently, like, you know, like you're no BS guy, what, what do you have in there usually? One a minute, usually throughout the 24 hour day. Um, it's pretty, pretty, not, not always, but when Amy and I first got together, she didn't understand how there was times I just wouldn't put the phone down. And out of respect for her, I said, hey, in the afternoon, I'll, I'll put the phone down for, through dinner. And yeah. Well, she grabbed my phone to look at it once and it was 127 messages and I hadn't been on it for an hour. She's like, what do you do? I said, well, I answer them when you're sleeping. And uh, she's like, I can't do that to you, you know, don't. So we, she was cool about it, but um, like if I do a Q and A, I'll get like 3,000 questions. And oh, after I answer a few hundred, they delete they it. They shut it off, right? Yeah. They shut it off. I think if I tried to be a different leader where I was more micromanaging, I wouldn't be able to help as many people. So I have such a dialed in crew and I'm a horrible mm -hmm. micromanager and I don't have to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. I'm able to set the, the business as far as the running of the business aside other than what you guys saw today. Focus on answering questions and helping people above and beyond what other you know companies usually offer. I really don't know any companies that run like ours do. You know, we're mm -hmm. pretty unique as far as that goes. You, you know, by the time it's said and done, I'm, 23, 25 hunts, you know, throughout the year of my own. Yep. And then I probably guide um, that much, you know, doubled again that much. Yep. Really for me, it's not a, I don't ever have total peace to shut my phone off, but it's by far worth it to not have that to get to hunt that much. And, and what I'm learning too is I don't think it'd be quantified to get to go on that many, you know, different trips and, and, and you know, everything from Broadhead penetration, like there's a guy promoting his 800 grain arrow thing, and I, he's part of the Ashby Foundation. And when Ashby did his study, it was on dead animals, right? And, and nothing wrong with that study. I'm not, yeah, he's a great man. But I've been able to shoot hundreds of animals, and so I get to learn a lot about. It. You think? Yeah. So <laughs> you know, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard for me to. There's a happy medium for everything, and like this guy, I think he just shoots pigs and stuff in Texas, and he's got this big push for 800. Grain arrows, which was an Ashby thing. Um, 650 grains was the bone breaking threshold. And I've read all the stuff. What's the FOC uh, promotion at? They're extreme FOC at 23 plus percent oh, wow. or something, like pretty high. And I'm lucky enough that I've gotten a shot of compound a bunch and then went to a stick. And so I've learned from, from both sides of it. You know, where you hit a point where, um, like my wife, Amy shoots, I don't know, 49 pounds and a 425 grain arrow. And, I think she's killed 17 animals now from mule deer to hogs to turkeys and white tail. And uh, she hasn't shot an elk yet, I guess. I mean, those arrows are zipping through those animals. Now, would they zip through a little bit more with a heavier arrow? Yes, but 425 and a cut on contact head goes right through the animals, you know? So 
there's got to be a happy medium because if my wife was shooting a 650 grain arrow, she probably wouldn't be able to shoot past 20 months. Well, yeah, that's where that that me, that happy medium goes. Yeah, and it seems like with a lot of the guys, they are they bring up when you hit bone. Well, I can tell you if you hit an elk shoulder, I don't care if you have 800 grains or uh, 500 or whatever, you're not going through the knuckle of the elk shoulder. You go through the scapula. But I mean, you, you say knuckle, you mean where the scap sits on the humerus, like yeah. that knuckle. That that's a pretty big intersection too. Like, uh, yeah. and it's kind of right higher than where a lot of people end up aiming. Yeah, higher and forward. And so when your arrow does go high forward, yeah. don't matter what you shot. You yeah, that's spear. Kind of like the accuracy, rather than uh, maybe focusing so much on your setup, focus a little more on accuracy, work on your, you know, your shooting. And my thing with guys is like, hey, I, I get to hunt a lot and I get to guide a lot and, and I get to work with my wife. And so I take all the knowledge that I learned from that and try to get people into this happy medium where you get decent speed and decent momentum. And I, you know, I'm constantly learning as well, but I, with my stick bow, I aim at the scapula and I shoot through it. And I'm shooting a 580 grain arrow, and a whopping 180 feet per second. I shoot through almost every animal I shoot at, and no yeah. problem at all. Kinetic energy, I mean, good, good, good momentum. The foot pads, yep. and momentum's everything. And I know you get a lot of prototypes to test with, and now you got a Snyder system. So let's talk your Snyder system and then maybe segue into that new thing that Bill's got cooking. Okay, cool. So the Snyder system was just a better micro diameter, a, a more durable micro diameter system. You shoot X impacts? I do now, yeah. I was shooting okay. Rampages, which is a 204. Right. Um, I was, I had designed a broadhead with uh, Rocky Mount Specialty gear, a screw in three blades. Okay. And I was shooting that and Bill, you know, asked, you know, basically just asked me, what what, else, what other designs do you have? And I said, well, man, I think that it's very valid to um, make a system the way I do my Rampage is a 204. I put the head insert and the broadhead and I glue it all in at one time. I don't, oh, you no can't shit. shake the broadhead out. So um, it's all one solid system. Yeah, I glue it all in there. Easton For, technology, like hidden insert? Yeah, yeah, the Easton, okay. the Easton hit. It's Bill's, but it's Easton. Yeah, License Easton, through yeah. that, yeah. So I take the hit, and it's a 75 grain hit, and I screw it onto a, um, depending upon how you do it, with, with the system I have, I have 275 grains of hit and broad hit. Yeah. So 200 grain head, 75 grain hit, and a 25 grain collar. I glue all that on and, and spin it and make sure it's good. And I build two or three or four dozen arrows for whatever I've got for the season, spin them all, make them perfect. And then I, I glue in the same principle. My field tips, I glue in uh, with the hit insert, mostly just rigidity. I don't yeah. have to, you glue everything, it's not gonna pull out. You know, a lot of guys have issues with, with components coming off or whatever. Yeah. Well, I don't have to worry about Bill's system bending. So it doesn't bother me to, to glue it in. Well, I said, man, I, I think it's it's a viable system to do for a skinny, a micro, and you wouldn't have to worry about durability. And so we redesigned his system to work for micros where you can use it like a hit, or if, uh, if you just run the standard broadhead with the shank, you can glue it all over the end. Almost impossible to have it spin badly because of the collar and everything else. It's more durable than any other micro system or as durable than any other micro system out there. And you get the choice of three different. You got a standard vented, a standard solid, wide vented, wide solid, and now you have uh, the single bevel that he offers. So with a single bevel, he just did it. I think if people pester him so much, you know, the the single bevel, the, the concept is when it hits a bone, it splits it. Yeah, yeah. it's just well, it also does a little extra damage in the body cavity. So rather than a flat hole, you have the bleeders and it's rotating. Yeah, so, channel. Yeah, like a square, basically. Which through. excites me. Yeah. Because I was worried about, I kind of want a square yeah. or a triangle hole on both sides. So as you guys saw my mess downstairs, all of that scattered out from I'm constantly testing stuff for people and bows, even compounds. Some of the stuff is coiling bro signs, right? Like you, you hear the 800 grain thing. Well, what is, amazes me with that is it's a guy that shot a mechanical, that shot a 400 grain arrow, hit up in the scapula, arrow stopped. Rather than just gradually going up and saying, you know, 400, maybe I need 475 in a fixed blade, 800 grains. And then they shoot something with 800 grains and of course it's gonna zip right through it. 
then the preaching starts. <laughs> I've shot this many animals and I had arrows bounce off and then I'm shooting an 800 grain arrow and I'll never go back. And it's like, well, dude, you, you literally went from north to south. There's a happy medium in there of a, you know, let's say a 475, 550 grain arrow doing 265 to 280. That's where I like to those be. Those are all sweet spot. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And honestly, for those that are watching this, like you got to put yourself in my shoes. I don't shoot fast arrows. I got a short ass to all of them. It's 27 inches. I shoot as much poundage as I can get on my Matthews. Like 74. 79, that's a yeah. 75 pound mod. So yeah. I twist them up. 275, 462. But guess what? I got awesome trajectory, yeah. which is important for elk hunting out west or hunting anything out west. Trajectory yeah. of your arrow. Yeah. Especially yeah. you. Yeah. As well, a track guy, you can shoot pretty far than your average track guy. With a compound, it was a big deal because I shot tournaments in the 90s and there was speed limit of 288. And I set my bows to shoot 283. Uh, and so I got used to that that cast. Well, that has a... Most people don't realize, and not to go into this crazy drawn out speech but when you range an animal at 60 and you range a branch and it's 32 and when you draw back and you aim at that animal if your 30 yard pin is on that branch you're inevitably you are aiming at that branch and you don't even know it yep. when you learn that cast it might save you from hitting something if you don't have time to range it or you can see the, the arc of your arrow you've learned not only that speed and tuning it is difficult to tune fast arrows. That's just how it is. Like, what do you think the threshold is for fixed broadheads, which is what I preach, like 280, 290? Yeah. Okay. A, a good guy, a good guy, a guy who can tune extremely well, 290. But generally, I tell guys 265 to 280. And it's amazing how many people I've said I shoot um, my bows at 271. And it's like I slept with their sister. Like, Why are you <laughs> shooting faster? And I'm like, let me explain this to you from a, an animal perspective. The speed of sound is 1100 and change. You're not beating that. What I have found, especially once I picked up a stick bow, if I took away, if you said, Aaron, I'm taking away, you were shooting 300, I'm taking 40 feet per second away to 260, which most people would have a crisis. But your bow is gonna be basically silent. I'm choosing silent because if you've shot a stick bow and I've, I've missed three times on an animal and he never moved and I killed him on the fourth arrow, that says something about noise. Like he didn't move where a, a compound, he's gone the first shot. Nothing will silence that bow other than a heavy arrow, like a heavy arrow. Though. So again, the happy medium. Yep. I could tell, shoot an 800 grain arrow, Dan, your bow will be silent. You'll be lobbing logs and you blow your scope housing off if you're shooting a dial at 40 yards. Cause right. why would you shoot an 800 grain arrow when a 475 yep. will blow through anything with yep. a fixed blade? And that's where that, that happy medium comes out and most people lobbing logs are lobbing logs back east out of a tree, stand around the ground one. You're probably not gonna go on a mountain hunt and, and shoot an 800 grain arrow. And that's where the dude that um, is promoting this 800 grain arrow thing needs to get out of his basement. He needs to get out of the pen. Nothing against, I've hunted over corn. I'm not, whatever in Texas, you gotta have corn somewhere around you and shoot shit because everybody's got it. It, uh, you know, whether you're sitting over it or not, there's a feeder within 200 yards in Texas. I don't care where you are. Where we're at up north, there's no high fence or anything, but everybody feeds down. You want to shoot something? There's going to be a feeder within 200 yards of you on the way to it. Well, knowing that, obviously, and knowing how it is farther down south, you get more high fence than... No, I, I don't have anything against all that. You do what you want to do, what makes you happy. But it's not a mountain hunt where you've just went on a mile and a half long stalk, you're out of water, uh, you know, it, it's a miracle you got on this animal and he's at 47 yards, uh, let's say, and he walks out nine yards. And now you're you're holding over, uh, you're guessing. An 800 grain arrow to 475, probably not gonna get it right with an 800. Uh, you know what I mean? Well, for sure, trajectory, you're, yeah. And, and that's where I get to where like, and, and I get criticized for whatever being, uh, I'm not trying to be arrogant. I get to hunt a lot of different animals. I keep the same setup. It's a happy medium setup for others. So that's why I want to dig into the stuff with yeah. you, man, just based on your field observations. Like, you know, like mechanicals, we shoot turkeys with mechanicals. For sure. It's just, well, she shot multiple with an iron wheel, you know, why? And she zipped them through them too fast. And it's almost, I'm like, honey, you almost need to shoot a mechanical to slow the damn arrow down so it stays in. But you you, you go to uh, a guy, for example, with some of the different sheep and mule deer hunts. These guys will come in with a 375 to 400 grain arrow with a mechanical. 
I will tell them, hey, the chances of you, it's hard to track down there. Everything's red. Um, yeah, gosh. Real cliffy. And I'm like, hey, look, I, I get the concept. Well, you watch multiple guys hit and you see a guy with a 450 grain fixed plate set up. Shoot a corner and away and zip through the offside shoulder. You see a guy do it with a mechanical and it barely gets to the offside shoulder. Again, that's this data I'm collecting of like, you know, if that guy was three inches to the left, we wouldn't be taking that animal home. Like no. he wouldn't make it through. And again, happy meeting. And, and I'm just lucky enough that I do get to see and test a lot. Of What's well, cool is that equipment. you're not here to sell anything except for backpacks. Yeah. And I'm, I'm here to sell hard work and discipline. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of nice to just like, look, I'm just telling you what I've learned from being in archery for so long, competing and hunting and guiding is really a leg up to watch all these hunters come through yeah. with what they've picked yeah. to bring. And then you can go, like, okay, I'll watch and see what happens. And I don't know, this stuff's one this of pretty good information, honestly. One of the largest deer I've ever seen not die. I it was it was several years ago, and it was an eye opener for me. That was right in the transition where I started shooting heavier arrows. When I say heavier, eighty pounds at five hundred and fifty grams. Before that, I was shooting lighter arrows. I hit a mule deer, mechanical arrow stopped, lost a. It's always two hundred when you don't find it. Right. A big deer. Yeah. This kid I was with, he got permission permission to trespass through this land. Giant mule deer was on the western slope. And I shot my buck. It was just a big, gnarly three by four. Uh, he had a couple days. I'm like, let's get you a deer. I watched him hit a legit 210 inch typical four by four. I didn't know what his setup was. I watched arrow hit, hit the rib vertical. I watched that rib flex in and it was a rage and the arrow bounced out. Deer was probably 325 pounds. It just split it vertical on the rib. And I'm like, you think it'll die? I'm like, I just watched your arrow bounce out, bro. What the hell are you shoot? Drew his bow back, 61 pounds. 348 grain arrow with the rage and, and Chuck Adams was on the, the front of the package, axed through an animal, you know, and, and the, the kid just thought that's, how many people are doing that? How many people are walking in because of marketing and buying a specific product when that's kind of our jobs now and, and others to hopefully get some common sense for the industry and, and knowledge. There's so many new archers right now that we're like been on a rampage trying to get with guys like you and. And uh, my buddy who Joshua owns the shop, great guy, and just, just dispel myths and just a more experienced narrative out there, I would yeah. say. Yeah, and I would say like, uh, people ask me all the time, if you're gonna shoot a compound, what would your setup be right now? Probably shoot a 75 pound, I got a 29 inch draw. So my, my idea would be I'd shoot a 525 to 550 grain arrow, 75 pounds. I would shoot uh, like an iron wheel standard or a cutthroat three blade, yep. something fixed with a good blood trail and a hole. Mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't shoot mechanicals anymore except for black bear possibly and uh, turkeys. Mm -hmm. I just have learned so much tuning that I don't have to shoot a mechanical. I make jokes, God invented mechanicals for people who can't tune. Um, which is actually a fairly true uh, statement. For um, sure. They initially came out, I, I get the bigger hole thing, but when they came out with that, they were, like rocket steel head. Yeah, steel heads. Little blade or oh, little yeah. marines. Yep. Uh, fun conversation. That's some good ass freaking knowledge, Marcus.